What's good, everyone, and welcome back to Having Juice with OJ. And today, I'm here with one of my other co-hosts, Juan. What's good, bro? What's going on, man? Ready to get into some baseball talk today? I know. I mean, we got the basketball down there, but that's over now. So I got this in my hand as a little prop. And uh, we're just going to start off real quickly recapping the Stanley Cup. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Florida Panthers just win their first ever Stanley Cup. That's huge. I mean, they were up 3-0 against the Oilers just for the Oilers to come back and win three games in a row and then lose in Florida. How do we feel about the series? I thought it was great. You know, I'm not a huge hockey guy. I'll watch it when it's mm -hmm. on, and, and I'll be honest, I'm a bandwagon guy. If the Flyers are good, then, then I'll watch some hockey. <laughs> I'll but right other, on that. Yeah, other than that, I don't really watch too much hockey, but, you know, at work we had a lot of the games on. We had the game on last night, and it's just been fun to watch. Mm -hmm. Anytime you see – you could have no idea what's going on in the sport. Anytime you see somebody that's down 0-3 and then they come back and tie it back up, it's always going to be exciting. I feel like you have to watch that game seven. So Yeah, it was an mortal lock that everybody who doesn't even like hockey was watching it. Because you have to, it's, yeah. it's game seven in, in, in any sport that's huge. I mean, the Oilers put up about, I think, 18 goals in the last three games before the game seven, obviously, the mm -hmm. games that they won. And then the game seven was a 2-1 victory by the Panthers, which everybody thought it was going to be pretty high scoring, but turns out nobody could score. Yeah. Connor McDavid can score. Connor McDavid wins the uh, Smythe Award. He wins the uh, final, or the, it's not finals MVP in hockey, playoff it's playoff MVP. MVP. Right? So the person on the losing team won the MVP, and that's kind of heartbreaking for him. I mean, I feel bad. He's the best skater and best hockey player I've ever witnessed personally. Yeah. So it was it was pretty crazy just the fact that he won it and somebody on the team who won didn't. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of weird. But that's just a quick recap for you guys for the uh, Stanley Cup. I mean, I love hockey. It's fun to watch. It went crazy. So it was a good series. For sure. Um, moving on, we're going to have some fun today talking about some baseball. Uh, we decided to do our starting nine all-time baseball players with two relievers and one closer. Uh, this is always a fun thing to do just because baseball is really getting into the swing of things right now, Juan. Mm -hmm. And the Phillies and Yankees both are doing very good for both of us. So oh, yeah. it's been very, very fun to watch uh, baseball for us. And now we can just recap some of our favorite players of all time. Exactly. And uh, we'll start off with first base. Okay. First base makes sense to me. Yeah, yeah. And we'll go in like a snake order kind of thing. So okay. I answer, you answer, then you answer your second base, and then I'll do it. So Wait. stuff like that. So for me, in first base, I'm going Albert Pujols. You know, I really just, he's a fan favorite. 296 average, uh, 374 on base percentage, 544 per, uh, slugging percentage, seven, over 700 home runs. Uh, having him at first base for me would be major for my bat. Yeah. I uh, I had Pujols too. I had you know same thing as you. All the stats: three-time MVP, rookie oh, of the yeah. year, eleven-time All Star, <laughs> six-time Silver Slugger. You know he had a stretch basically where he didn't hit below three hundred or have less than a hundred RBIs or less than thirty home runs for about nine years. Mm -hmm. Like talk about dominant. Pujols in his prime was was the machine. You know, absolute that, dominance. I think that anybody that well, you know, you can. This was interesting for me because you got to kind of compare a bunch of different eras of players. Yes. And so to see Pujols compared against like a Lou Gehrig, that was That was cool. my second yeah. pick. That was my second pick. So since you took Pujols, then I, my two honorable mentions I had for first base were Lou Gehrig and David Ortiz. Okay. David Lou Ortiz, big pop. Yeah. yeah, David Ortiz. You know, you can categorize him as a DH if you want. Yeah. Um, he played a little bit of first base, especially when he was younger. Just one of those clutch factor guys. No matter what, you had confidence that Ortiz was going to get the job done. Mm -hmm. And then when you look at Lou Gehrig's numbers, it's just like that. It was it's, absurd. It's I mean, insane. 340 batting, just yeah. absolutely insane. So who are you taking for that? I guess if you took Pujols, I'll, I'll take Lou Gehrig. All right, you got you got Lou? I'll take Lou Gehrig. So then you get to pick your second baseman, which, whew, it's like it's a rough one to pick. So, yeah, second base was... I, I bounced back and forth with a couple of names. As a Phillies fan, I felt like I had to go chase Utley. Mm -hmm. But then I pivoted a little bit, and then I, I decided to go with somebody who I kind of watched growing up. Um, he was a little older than my time frame, but Craig Biggio. 
Wow. So Craig Biggio, okay. career hit 281, 291 homers, 3,000 hit club, um, 414 stolen bases, mm-hmm. seven-time All-Star, four gold gloves, five silver sluggers, and is a Hall of Famer. He was just a versatile guy. He caught growing up. He caught in his younger stages mm-hmm. of his career. He played a little bit of outfield. Um, 13 seasons with at least 150 hits, and he had three seasons where he went 20 and 20. So mm-hmm. at second base, you know, I thought about guys, like I said, like Utley, and then, you know, I also thought about going back to the older generations, Joe Morgan. Okay. Joe Morgan's stats were insane. Um, Some of the older guys had, like, insanely impressive stats. Yeah. And it was he, hard to overlook. Joe Morgan was putting up years where he was basically putting up 10, 10 war a season. So mm-hmm. Joe Morgan, if – if I watched him play, I feel like I would have put Joe Morgan on there. But mm-hmm. I tried to go with guys that I, I more watched play than anything else. Yeah. So I kind of want to explain to the people real quick what war is, mm-hmm. just in case if you're watching, you have no idea what war means. It means wins above replacement, which means like uh, everything that you are in a player, like your hitting, your, your, uh, your fielding, all that type of stuff. That is combined against, like, who your replacement player would be. Yeah. Like, so, like, how much better are you than the person if... Than an average MLB player, basically. Yeah. Who would come before... A replacement level player. Exactly. So, that's what war is, and that's how you kind of really determine how effective and how, like, important that player is to your team. So, basically, Craig Biggio with a 65.5 war Mm -hmm. is 65 and a half wins better than an average level MLB player. Exactly. And then to go back to Pujols, Pujols is war... Mm-hmm. was 101.4. <laughs> so Albert Pujols throughout his career was worth 101.4 wins more than an average first baseman. Yeah. If that puts it into more perspective. Yeah, that, that kind of helps the casuals it. out there kind of explain it a little yeah. bit better for them. Um, so you take my boy Biggio. Um, I'm going to take Robinson Cano here. Um, mm-hmm. He was always my favorite second baseman growing up. Uh, his bat, his swing was so amazing. I mean... He had over 330 home runs, batting average over 300, um, OP, OPS 830, love it. Run A lot of runs, RBIs, doubles, uh, played a lot of games. The only thing that kind of impeded him was his two issues with PEDs, yeah. uh, causing him two suspensions. Mm-hmm. One was for a full year, one was for, I think, about a half or something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, still one of my favorite players to watch of all time, uh, having him as my second baseman. He's a big second baseman. I too. loved watching Cano. He you know, was like always said, so his, fun. His swing was just pretty. He, when he pimped the ball, uh-huh. you knew <laughs> the hand came off. It was almost like, mm-hmm. not it wasn't Griffey, but it was Griffey-esque and just how smooth it was. Yeah, 100%. So I go him for uh, second base. And then shortstop, I get the snake draft. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> I mean, it's, do I pair him up? Do course. I pair him up? Derek Jeter, um, of course, the captain, seventy-one point three WAR, like we just explained to you guys. That's big. Mm-hmm. Batted three ten, three seventy-seven, and then uh, four forty were all his numbers throughout his uh, grid. Three thousand four hundred and sixty-five hits. I mean, the man just gets hits. Um, I, I can't imagine taking anybody else's shortstop. I was actually thinking about throwing Alex Rodriguez in as my shortstop. Yeah. As, like, that was my second, but I couldn't do that to the captain. <laughs> so I went Derek Jeter at shortstop for my team. How are you feeling? I mean, similarly, it's hard to just not take Jimmy Rollins. Yeah. So that's exactly I mean, what I did. And <laughs> as, I, as I was going through, I kind of put it this way where – Rollins is a Phillies fans Jeter. Like, that's who we mm-hmm. watched growing up at shortstop. Manning, man in shortstop, man in the leadoff hole, you know. Like, that was that was who we had. So, I, I had to go with Jimmy, you know, 264 career hitter, 231 homers, um, 470 stolen bases, almost a 48 war. Um, won an MVP in 2007, three-time All-Star, mm-hmm. four gold gloves, and won a World Series, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, his 2007 MVP season was just insane. Absurd. Um, 296 with 38 doubles, 20 triples, 30 homers, 94 RBIs, and 139 runs scored, plus 41 steals. That will do it. All in a year. <laughs> that, so will, that will get you MVP. <laughs> I went with Jimmy. Um, are, you know, And again, going back to old generations, Kyle Ripken, it's hard to not mm-hmm. include Kyle Ripken in some of these conversations. And somebody I enjoyed watching growing up was Troy Tulowitzki, too. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I forgot about him. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. Um, yeah. 
A little funny story about Jimmy. I actually got to hang out with him for a night. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got to take him out. We went to San Pan in Philadelphia. He was absolutely amazing. He's like the nicest guy. I, yeah. I was fanboying. I mean, when we, we got to watch Jimmy growing up, it was just watching him grow up, yeah. you have to pick him in your team, your all-time team, because Agreed. watching him was just so great. Absolute legend. Um, who do you have for your third baseman? All right, so third base is where I get, one, a little personal, and two, I also think it just makes sense. You could put this guy at first. You could technically put him in right field. Mm -hmm. doesn't really matter to me, but my favorite player ever growing up, Miguel Cabrera. Mm. Um, growing up, my dad sat me down and we watched the 2003 World Series and I watched him just dominate teams and I was like, I really like that guy. So growing up, I was actually a Marlins fan. Mm -hmm. I caught some flack for it from my family because, you know, they didn't like the Philly kid being a Marlins fan. But of course, I was just a big Miguel Cabrera guy. So I had to throw him at third. He's just insane. Triple crown winner, two MVPs, career 300 hitter, 511 home runs. Um, a 67.1 war, a World Series champion, um, and we share the same birthday. So Oh, that's your guy. That's my guy for <laughs> sure. Third base, I'm going Miguel Cabrera. Like I said, put him wherever you want, but I put him at third because mm -hmm. I felt like, well, you took Pujols from me, but I felt yeah. like I had to have Pujols at first. Yeah. Um, yeah, who do you got? For me, I actually picked Mike Schmidt. Yeah, I had yeah. him as an honor. Uh, I, yeah, I liked Mike Schmidt. I mean, his. His war is 106.8. Yeah. Like, phenomenal. that's just absolutely insane. He's widely known. As, he's probably known as the greatest third baseman I think of so, all yeah. time. Um, he's a 10 gold glove winner. Um, home runs, 548. Mm -hmm. um, just an absolute menace over there at third. Yeah. My other honorable mention was Adrian Beltre. Okay. Um, he was just, he was insane too. 477 home runs, a 21 year career, which is huge. Yeah. Uh, excellent defender. Also five gold gloves. So he was my honorable mention at third, but I'm going to have to go Mike Schmidt for this one. I had Chipper too. Chipper was an honorable. Chipper, Chipper was going to, was also there. It was like my honorable mention was either Beltre or Chipper. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's third base. And then do we want to go to outfield and then pitcher catcher and then all that stuff? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. So we'll start out in left field. Okay. Um, you already know who I have to pick for this one. Go ahead. You should know. Barry Bonds. Yeah. Uh, 762 homers, seven MVPs. Um, there's not much other to say other than no, he, he's the best left fielder just ever. amazing. Yeah. But my second person, my honorable mention, was Manny Ramirez. Yeah, I had Manny too. Yeah, 312 three average, 555 homers, 12-time All-Star. Just He was so good to watch. I also loved his swing. Yeah, But uh, had to go with Barry Bonds here. Who did you pick for left field? I mean, I had Barry too. I feel like once you start just looking at the position, yeah. one, it was a little, th it was a little thin. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I didn't, like, I didn't love putting players on here that I've never seen play. I've seen highlights of Ted Williams. I know he hit 400. Like, yeah, I that, agree with that. That's great. And I, it's, I don't want to discredit the man, but I never watched him play. It's a different era. Mm -hmm. So since you took Barry, I'll, I'll take Ted Williams. But I also had Ricky Henderson, Ricky Henderson would have on been my a good list, one too. too. I mean, just the ultimate leadoff hitter. He had a little bit of pop, too. He could, he could pop one over the fence if he wanted to. Mm -hmm. um, but you know... You know, if Ricky gets on first, Ricky's getting on third, and then Ricky's going to get home. So, yeah, you know, I, I think I could go either way. I, I guess I'll stick with the more well-rounded player at Ty Williams Ted since you snatched up another one of my guys. <laughs> I know. You got to get me on a snake draft. I think uh, I might get you on center. I think you also probably got me in center. Ah, <laughs> uh, All right, you're up. <laughs> center, I mean, I feel like this – all right, I might not because I feel like this one could have went one of two ways. Oh. Um, I feel like there's two great answers for center. I, I think so, like, too. I feel like it depends on which way you wanted to go. Mm -hmm. I went with the local guy. I went with Mike Trout. Um, okay, okay. You didn't screw me. You uh, yeah, screw you took me. Griffey? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I figured. I, I figured. Um, Trout, I mean, it just sucks that injuries got to him. You know, I, I was on – I used to say all the time, if injuries didn't get to him, he was on mm -hmm. path of being the GOAT. Like, yeah. no questions in my mind. He's still, you know, a career almost 300 hitter. He's 299, 378 homers, you know, mm -hmm. almost 1,000 RBIs, 86.2 war, and he's still, like, what, 31 years old, something like that? Yeah. So Mike Trout's definitely a great answer there. Three MVPs, 11 All-Stars, nine Silver Sluggers. I don't think you could go wrong with either one of them, um, but pandering a little bit, 
local guy, a Birds fan. I, I went with Mike Trout. Are you? Do you see him coming to Philly? I feel like if he didn't sign that massive extension, which in fairness he should have, you know, get your bag. But that was his chance to really get out. I think. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't. I don't think I see it anymore. I think it's past it's the course. Way past due at this point. Yeah, unless they're willing to take a little bit of a lower package, because I don't feel like it's it's worth it. It's crazy to say. I don't feel like it's worth it to give up crazy prospects for Trout anymore. Mm-hmm. He's kind of showed you he's not been able to stay healthy. He's getting older. He's expensive. So hey, I think I think it's I think the train's gone on that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd probably have to agree, but a lot of Philly fans still would want to see him here. Oh, of course we'd want to see yeah, him here. Yeah, but he's uh he's definitely on the older side. He struggled with his health, so that's something and he's I, I wouldn't want to see. Yeah, I was about to say, you're going to have to pay a bag. Yeah. Unless he wants to take a pay cut to come to Philly, which or unless maybe. The, right, unless the Angels are going to eat the, some of that salary, which doesn't seem like they want to do that. No, so. I don't think they have wanted to do that for yeah. a while. Um, yeah, so you almost got me, but actually I had two different people. I had Ken Griffey Jr. Mm-hmm. That's my main guy. That's my center fielder for this team. Uh, the sweetest swing of the bat yeah, in easy. all of baseball, like mm-hmm. ever. I've never seen a player with such fluidity when he's swinging that bat. Um, there's not much other to say other than he was fast, can catch, can hit, can hit bombs. Like, I mean... We've talked about Ken Griffey before, mm-hmm. starting center fielder in my MLB The Show team. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing else to say other than he's the GOAT. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going Ken Griffey here. But I did have a uh, secondary one in who I actually was talking to one of my friends yesterday about this player, Ty Cobb. Okay. Um, all-time uh, batting average leader mm-hmm. at 366. So if you were going to take Ken from me, I was going to go him because yeah. he's an automatic hit. Yeah, 366 Kyle. throughout your entire career is absolutely insane. Yeah. Like, nobody really touches that. So I go him for center field, Ken Griffey Jr. I'm liking my squad right now. I I'm, had like, a, I'm liking my squad. I had another guy that I thought – I don't think he's, like, you know, on the same tier as Trout and Griffey, but I was a big Carlos Beltran fan growing yeah. up. Yeah. Switch hitting, Puerto Rican guy, mm-hmm. like, you know. You'll see that that's kind of a, a trend here. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't tell. Couldn't tell. Um, for my right fielder, I'm going with who I actually grew up loving this guy with me and my dad. My dad, this was his favorite player of all time, Hank Aaron. Okay. Um, yeah, he got the all time lead, like home run leader taken away from him Mm -hmm. from my left fielder. Um, (laughs) so I have the two most home runs in two of my spots, which I absolutely love. He had 755 homers, second of all time. Like I said, he's first in ribbies. So putting him right below one of my contact hitters. Mm-hmm. And it's just ribby, ribby, ribby. Um, 2,297 ribbies, by the way. And a 25-time All-Star. So I can't hate that in right field right now. Absolutely not. How are you feeling about your right fielder? Again, a little personal here. Um, I think that I think Hank Aaron is great. I think that he's probably the best hitting right fielder ever. One of the best right fielders ever. For me personally, and, and also from a stat standpoint, I'm going to take my man Roberto Clemente. That was my second. Um, you know, growing up Puerto Rican, like you said, your dad's favorite player is Hank Aaron. Mm-hmm. I don't think there you, you can find a Puerto Rican whose favorite player is not Roberto Clemente <laughs> or somebody that – or a Puerto Rican that doesn't have some sort of Clemente gear of some <laughs> sort. So I went with Clemente. And not, again, yes, he's Puerto Rican. Yes, he was he – was, beloved on the island but in the same breath a great ball player mm-hmm. hit 317 for his career 240 homers 3,000 hits on the dot 13 1300 rbis almost 95 war a world series mvp two-time world series champion mvp in 1966 15-time all-star 12-time gold cool. glove player um he was a great right fielder Great player, just a better man, you know, passed away, taking hurricane relief on a plane, and um, sad, but career got taken from him. I got to go Clemente. I think he's just the go right fielder for me. Yeah, no, I would have to agree. I mean, he was, you just gave me chills with all that because he really was like that. Um, Hank, like, like you said, that's your favorite player. Hank Aaron's mine. Both of them sitting right here on my screen. Yeah. Just absolute goats in right field and right. also just – what you got? No, I was just saying, right field was cool. Right field oh, had yeah. a lot of people. Yeah, in there. they did. They did. 
There was a lot of people, but I just feel like those two stood out oh, the most. easily. I knew I was putting Clemente on there, and I thought that <laughs> she might have taken him, but... Yeah, I had Hank Aaron. I had Ichiro. Ichiro, I loved watching. Ichiro up. Suzuki had the craziest swing. Swing ever. arm, I mean, it was wild. It was he was awesome to watch. Mm-hmm. You know, he comes over and wins MVP and Rookie of the Year in the same season, um, which is like unheard of. Unheard of on an amazing team too. That team was loaded up. Mm-hmm. Um, Hank Aaron, I had on here. I had another old guy, Babe Ruth. I feel like it's. Yeah, you, you I can't just, leave I him could, off. You, you know? can't leave him off, but I couldn't pick him. I don't yeah. know what it is. Like it's just like about how old it was. Like yeah. I just couldn't find myself taking him. And then uh, Tony Gwynn. I feel like Tony, Tony Gwynn, Gwynn is just one of those guys that you know just d- got it done. Mm-hmm. You know, just got it done. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's your turn on the swing of things, I believe. So are we going catcher? Starter? Uh, I s- I say we go. Yeah, let's do catcher first, and then we'll do our starter. All right. Taking you back to Puerto Rico. All, <laughs> all three of my catchers were Puerto Rican, to be honest. Um, I took Pudge, Avon Pudge Rodriguez. Okay. Um, one of those guys that was on that 2003 Marlins team that I watched with Miguel Cabrera and my dad growing up, and I just always took a liking to him. And also just what a cool nickname, like mm-hmm. Pudge. I never, Pudge. I never quite understood <laughs> it, but it worked for him. You know, career 296 hitter, 311 homers, 1,300 RBIs, almost a 69 war. Mm-hmm. You know, won an MVP, 14-time All-Star, 13 gold gloves behind the plate is crazy. That is wild. Um, won, a, won a World Series, like I said, and then a Hall of Fame in 2017. Just had an absolute rocket of an arm behind the plate. It was it was insane. And then the other two guys that I thought about, my favorite catcher watching growing up was by far Yadier Molina. Yeah. I just loved how he played with people on the bases and how he, <laughs> he was just smarter than everybody. Um, and then I was also a big Jorge Posada guy. Jorge. And then I put their stats next to Pudge, and it was just not even close. Not even comparable. Yeah, it was it was comparable, but it wasn't at the same time. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to go ahead and take Pudge from my catcher. Here got? we go. Uh, this one, I was kind of all over the place because you mentioned Jorge, right? Like, mm-hmm. watching him growing up was just absolutely insane. But I went for a slugger here, Mike Piazza. Nice. Okay. Uh, 59.6 war, 427 homers, over 1,300 ribbies, 308 batting average, 12-time All-Star, 10-time Silver Slugger. Um, there's not much else, much else to say other than just his bat was electric. Yeah. So, like, yeah, like, I want a great catcher, but I also just want somebody who hits bombs. Yeah. And he hits bombs. My other guy who I was thinking about is actually Johnny Bench. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Johnny Bench was 75 war, 389 homer, 1,300 ribbies, 267 batting average. Wasn't the best. Uh, 14-time All-Star and 10-time Gold Glove, two-time NL MVP and two-time World Series champion. Yeah. He has the resume to be in an honorable mention here, but I'm sticking with Mike Piazza for this one. Yeah, Bench is one of those old-time players that we just don't know too much about. We can look at the stats and see how good he was. Yeah. We never got to watch him to really see yeah. what it's like, you know. But yeah, his just his numbers and his stats just yeah, show you look at the like numbers. crazy. Yeah, you're like that's <laughs> that's actually it's like he yeah. looks way better than Mike Piazza. I'll tell you that. <laughs> um, moving on, we got pitcher. I had two people selected here. Okay. Um, like there's there's the main one that you could go for, which is like Cy Young. But like I just I personally couldn't pick Cy Young. No, I couldn't either. Um, I went Randy Johnson here. Uh, I was yeah. I was on that fence. I didn't go him. Though. Yeah, I went Randy Johnson. Three hundred three wins, three point two nine ERA, over four thousand in- innings pitched, a one oh three point five WAR. Guys, Oof, that yeah. is that's a high WAR. Yeah. Um, my honorable mention was Clayton Kershaw. Yeah, I had him. Uh, watching him because we actually got to see that a little mm-hmm. bit more. Uh, one hundred ninety eight wins, two point four eight ERA, which is wild. Over 2,500 innings pitch, 157 ERA plus. Like, he's just – he did that thing. Yeah. Clayton's, lefty. like, prime was insane. Yeah. Who'd you have for your starting pitcher? So, I wanted to, you know, troll a little bit and put Ranger Suarez because that's my man. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But I didn't. I went with Pedro Martinez. Pedro. Yeah. Um, I thought about it in the sense of if I wanted somebody on the mound for one game against your team, who would I want? And I think Pedro is just one of those. He's just dependable, you know. Mm-hmm. 219 and 100 over his career, 293 ERA, 84 war as a, as a career, mm-hmm. three Cy Youngs, won a pitching triple crown, eight-time All-Star, won a ring, five-time ERA champion. Um, and, yeah, he was just a dominant pitcher mm-hmm. from 97 through 2003. 
um, 118 and 36 in that span with a 2.2 ERA, 2.13 ERA plus and a .94 whip. Mm -hmm. Just mowing people that's, down. That's dominance. Mowing guys down. <laughs> 2,000 he went. Uh, he had a 1.7 ERA, a 2.91 ERA plus, and opponents hit 167 against him in mm -hmm. 217 innings. I'm gonna throw Pedro on the bump and see what he does against your right fielder and left fielder. Um, <laughs> yeah, because I got trust in him. Yeah, you got big trust in the boy. I do. And then I also went uh, another guy that I liked watching growing up, won an MVP in a Cy Young, uh, Justin Verlander. Mm. Just one of those guys that. Great, great time to watch. He would literally start the game throwing 94 and end the game throwing 100. You know, dominant during his prime with Detroit. And even still in, in Houston, great guy. He won, but did he win a Cy Young in Houston? Did he? Yeah. I think he yeah, did, yeah, yeah. right? So Verlander is another one of those guys that I was like, yeah, I think I think he should at least make the list as an honor. I think he did, right? I think he did, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had to have. He had to have. Yeah, yeah. He definitely did. Um, Verlander's an absolute stud. I mean, he was so good. Mm -hmm. um, you can't hate any of those starting pitchers we just named. No. I mean, any one of them would do good in, in a series against us battling right now, yeah. even though I bury Bonds and Hagarin. Um, <laughs> yeah, so relievers, we're picking two, and you're up, I believe. So... This was hard for me, actually. This was I really hard. I couldn't like, find any relievers non -closers, that I loved. Non-closers, right? Is yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, non-closers. Non well, like, yeah. So, or people that were mostly non-closers. Like, yeah. So the first guy that I went with was an MLB The Show legend, to be honest, but I also liked watching him. Um, Yankees guy, Dylan Batances. Okay. He, uh, so, six foot eight. Pumping like 98 at you and then hitting you with like an 88 mile an hour power curve. Mm -hmm. I remember watching him and just thinking like, how do you touch anything he throws? Yeah, it's insane. So I struggle to finding non closers that I that I love. That I loved, yeah. Same. Um, so the first one that I went with was Dylan Batances. Yeah. You want me to go my second, or you want to? Yeah, go yeah. Just throw it out there. Uh, my second was Darren O'Day. Okay. I figured, you know, hey, if I'm gonna go six eight from the top, I'll come with another guy that's like. Six foot coming from the side, side. Um, and also just an, another guy. He was he went forty two and twenty one over his career, two five nine ERA and twenty one saves, and he had over four hundred appearances. Mm -hmm. So mostly a uh, mostly like a setup relief guy. Yeah. Um, just, yeah, like I said, crazy arm angle. Uh, twenty fifteen, he had <laughs> one five two ERA and eighty two strikeouts with fourteen walks. Like, I'll take it. Ain't too shabby. No, not too bad. Not after having Pedro on the bump. Exactly. So I can't hate that. For my relievers, I like like I said, I don't know. Is, is the relievers like just not that deep with how good like everyone's been? Like I feel it was like, hard. So I, I could name you guys that like I liked growing up, but I didn't yeah. think they stacked up on a team like this. Yeah. Like I liked Ryan Madsen growing up yeah. as as like the Philly setup guy. They had like J C Romero, people mm -hmm. like that, but I agree. Like, every time I looked, I couldn't even find lists of setup guys. Yeah, every, same. I, everything was, like, for this year, fantasy rankings or things yeah. like that. So, yeah, it, it was kind of hard. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I feel like the closers get all the love. Yeah, yeah, closers definitely do get all the love. Um, that, like I said, this is diff uh, difficult for me, but I actually picked Jonathan Papelbon. Okay. Yeah, my boy had 368 saves, 2.44 ERA. 1.04 whip and a six-time all-star uh watching him on the bump growing up like was actually dangerous as a, yeah. Yan as a yankees fan uh was actually dangerous he was very good yeah he came to philly and now we hate him but. yeah yeah <laughs> exactly and then that happened but like in his prime he he could do work so i like him as my reliever after randy um another one is billy wagner that's my closer yeah that's yeah, your closer that's what I had as my closer mm. So I did 422 saves, 2.31 ERA, under a one whip, seven-time All-Star. Um, since you have that as your clo closer, I'll be nice, and I'll take my other guy, Which is uh, Joe Nathan. Okay. <laughs> so he had 377 saves, 2.87 ERA, 1.12 uh, uh, whip, and a six-time All-Star. Also a really good pick. I'll let, I'll let Juan keep his closer. Um, <laughs> So that, yeah, like those two, they'll do me justice. They'll get me to my closer. Mm -hmm. So that's all that matters. Um, you can pick your closer since we already kind of know who it is. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm kind of pivoting now. Okay, pivoting. All so right. So your, your two relievers were closers. 
Yeah. I went I went with guys that I felt like were more set up guys, but if you're gonna if we're gonna go that route, okay. I think I'm gonna swap out oh, I like Batansis. I might keep Batansis in. Nah, I'm gonna take out Batansis and I'm gonna put in Goose Gossage. Okay. And then for Darren O'Day, I'm gonna take him out. I'm gonna put in Trevor Hoffman. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Trevor. And then for my closer, I'll keep Billy Wagner. Okay, but yeah, like you said, four, 422 saves, seven-time All-Star, reliever of the year in 99. Um, another guy I just watched growing up, Philly's guy, mm-hmm. um, towards the back end of his career, but he would just come in throwing absolute heat. Yeah. First guy I ever saw throw 100 miles an hour was Billy Wagner. Um, I didn't know this, but Billy Wagner learned to pitch with his left hand because he broke his right arm twice as a kid. What? I, don't, I, I probably should have. I probably should have fact checked that. But, but <laughs> doing my research, that's what I found. Um, he averaged almost twelve strikeouts per nine innings pitched as a closer. I feel like your job is to come in and just get swings and misses. So I'll go uh, Goose, Goose Hoffman, and Billy Wagner. There we go. There we go. Trevor was definitely uh, up there for me. I figured you just took Mo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I had to take Mariano Rivera yeah. here. There's a little slight bias here. But uh, let's look at some of the numbers from the GOAT. Yeah, from the GOAT real quick. All-time MLB saves leader with 652 saves. Career 2.21 ERA with a one whip. Exactly. 13-time All-Star. Five-time World Series champion. Mm-hmm. So he likes to win. MLB record with 205 um, ERA plus, and they've got 1,100 career strikeouts, a little bit over it, 73 extra. Uh, recorded at least 40 saves in nine seasons. First anonymous Hall of Fame inductee in 2019. Off one pitch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. that dude is like that. Yeah. Uh, having him as my closer will be huge. Yeah, he's breaking bad Huge. Sure. Yes, 100%. So there goes my list. And there goes your list. Mm-hmm. We're gonna we're gonna type them out and throw that up there on Instagram yep. and see which team people like the best because that's just how I'm feeling. I, right. I don't know. How do you feel about your team right now? I like my team. I feel like I went a little uh, little personal and a little mm-hmm. stats. You know, I think that you having Barry and Hank Aaron and left and right is definitely mm-hmm. definitely good for you. And then you got. <laughs> and Griffey in center, too. Um, but, you know, my outfield of uh, Ted Williams, Trout, and Roberto Clemente is not bad. Mm-hmm. I love Mickey at third. I love Jimmy at short. You know, second, I like Biggio. Yeah. Maybe I could have went Joe Morgan. But, like I said, I was trying to go more people that, yeah. that we watched and that saw you watched. growing up. Um, I'm still a little upset that you took pool holes from me. Yeah, that was right to start too. Yeah, right, 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 right to jump, start. Of course, you took pool holes from me. So, <laughs> you know, I'm all right with a Pudge, Garrick, Biggio, Rollins, Miggy, Ted Williams, Trout, Clemente, with Pedro mm-hmm. on the bump. Mm-hmm. I'll live with that. It's Here baseball. Here we go. So let us know in the comment section below, and also on Instagram when we throw this up, because I do want to know who you guys think would win. In a seven-game series, we'll go. Right. Um, yeah, so moving on from that, like, let's just talk a little bit about Phillies, a little right. bit about Yankees. Why not, right? Why not? Um, the Phillies right now currently uh, hold a 52-26 and 26 record. Mm-hmm. Um, how are we feeling about them so far, and who do you see? And we've talked about All-Stars a little bit, but who do you see actually getting the All-Star vote? Oh, I mean, Bryce is, Bryce is your MVP right now. Bryce is locked. Bryce is – Bryce, I think – if, if you're a betting man or woman, mm-hmm. you should put your money on Bryce Harper for another MVP. I think that, that he's hit, he's seeing the ball so well right now mm-hmm. that it's just it's so much fun to watch. Watching Phillies baseball has just been great this year. And then you lose one game and, you know, social media acts like the world's falling apart and mm-hmm. it's hilarious to me. Always. Um, but Phillies are just great. They, 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 are, they are bringing the city life right now. Um, we got nothing really going on. Union Union aren't great. Um, we don't have a WNBA team or anything like mm-hmm. that just yet. So it's just the Phillies. And when the Phillies are good, this city is buzzing. Mm-hmm. And I'm excited for, like, that October time when the, when the Eagles are starting up and the Phillies are playing playoff games. Like, I think that's when the Phillies just at its best. So uh-huh. um, I'm, I love watching the Phillies right now. Watching the starters is just 
It's phenomenal. You've got the top three ERA guys are all Phillies, mm -hmm. you know. So I'm excited for the season to keep going. I hope they don't hit any sort of walls. I hope they can all stay healthy. But in terms of all-stars, Bryce has got to be an all-star. Sucks that Trey got hurt because Trey was on pace to win a batting title. Mm -hmm. Um casty has been picking it up lately. He has. Uh, I, you know, I think, I think if I had to pick right now, Rangers should start the All Star game. So, mm -hmm. just all kinds of stars throughout that team. Yeah, I would have to agree. Uh, what do you think about what you should do with Rojas? Do you think he's the guy? Do you think you take him batting ninth just for his glove? Not during the regular season. Um, in the playoffs, I think you can get away with it a bit more. And I feel like that, that sounds backwards, but I feel like in the playoffs, um, you need that guy that can just track down balls in the outfield. Mm -hmm. I mean, he caught that ball last year off of uh, Acuna's bat when Craig Kimbrell just fed him a meatball. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if anybody else on the team or in the league is making that catch besides Johan Rojas, you know? So mm -hmm. I think the glove is great. I think that they're handling it well, though. Let him get consistent at bats and let him build his confidence up in AAA. David Dahl's crushing the ball right now. Marsh can play a good center field. It's not like you really need him. He's still young enough that you can – you have the options to develop mm -hmm. him in the minors. I think keeping him up here and letting him just kind of go through the motions of struggling isn't, isn't conducive for what he wants to do or to get him better. So – let him get consistent at bats. Let him build his confidence up down there, and that's what he's doing. He's crushing it. Mm -hmm. So hopefully by the time he comes up, he's a little better with the with the bat. But um, during the regular season, I feel like you just got to get you just got to stack wins up. You don't want to be in those wild card games. You want to be playing games at home, especially at the bank. So yeah, hundred percent. CBP is a tough ballpark to be playing at. Right now, you guys are hitting about a two sixty average, mm -hmm. which is very solid for a team, and your ERA is a little bit above three. Um, that puts you in the top of every statistical category pretty much for baseball right now, mm -hmm. which is huge. Uh, like you said, Bryce is an automatic boom right into the all-star game 100%. Yeah. Uh, Ranger, I would also have to agree. He's been absolutely lights out on the mound. He's, I mean, he just lost the game the other day, but that wasn't on him, right? No, not yeah, really. Yeah, it wasn't on him. I don't think it was. So he did get his first loss a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. But the game the other night, he, it, did get, he wasn't got no him. decision. But, mm -hmm. um I, I've always been a big Ranger guy since he was since he was a reliever, since he was coming up in the minors. There was just something about <coughs> him, the poise and everything, and I was like, that that guy's going to be really good. Mm -hmm. And it's great watching it come to fruition. It's great watching him dominate, dominate mm -hmm. lineups, man. I love watching Ranger Flores pitch. Mm -hmm. I agree. And a little quick recap, a little bit on my Yankees. Yeah. Because the Yankees have been pretty good this year, too, I'd have to They've say. Been They've right. been on a slide. They've been on a slide, though. They had three tough series against tough, tough. Yeah, they had tough schedules. Yeah, though. tough schedule. Um, pitching's been eh, like the uh, bullpen really hasn't been doing that well, and the hitting has been abysmal. It yeah. feels like. But uh, the Yankees are currently fifty-two and twenty-eight, first in the AL East division. Obviously, um, that's a over a sixty-five percent win rate um, so far. And they're ranking first in home runs with 84, sixth in runs scored with 279. Batting average a little bit below you guys, sitting at like 255. Mm -hmm. um, Juan Soto has been like the guy, I mean, throughout the entire year so far. Pay that man. Yeah, pay that man big bucks. Give him a blank check. Um, Aaron Judge has been like, he was so bad in the beginning to start off. Batting in the 100s, it felt like. Mm -hmm. um, high 100s, but still bad. And then all of a sudden just picked up the last, like, 40-something games. Did you and see the, the graphic of his stats before he got ejected and after he got ejected? No. It's, it's like, insanely different. Like, it's almost like the ejection is what flipped him to become a monster <laughs> again. Yeah, I mean, I hope so. Because that's <laughs> what's needed right now. Um, the Yankees have to verse uh, – the Mets today, actually, in the Subway Series with Garrett Cole having a second start. Okay. Uh, the Subway Series is always a rough one. Uh, you, you really never know who wins, even though the Mets have 39 wins. Mets are playing well right now, They, they do. The Mets they, are they playing are. pretty well. Their bats are hot. Yeah. Yeah, which is, which is going to be rough because you know Garrett Cole is going to give up a home run in the first inning, <laughs> like he always does. Taiwan Walker style. Exactly. It's the only thing he knows to do, and then he'll strike out 10 in a row after that. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, he's on a pitch limit, I think, right now, yeah. uh, which makes sense. You don't want to hurt him. No. But uh, 
yeah, like I said, it is so great to have both of our teams doing so well because it gets fun toward the end of the season. It gets yeah. chippy, but it gets fun. And it's less stress. It's like, you know, I don't want to jinx anything. Mm -hmm. But the Phillies, the Phillies are somewhat, I don't want to say coasting into the playoffs because anything could happen, but I don't have to stress about them having to make up a 10-game di like difference in the division or the wild card. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just kind of easy sailing. If they lose a game, sure, it might suck, but it's not it's not the end of the world. Mm -hmm. People, I, They lost a game to the Diamondbacks the other day, and you would have thought that like everything was falling apart. And then they come back and they crush them two games in a row. You don't really hear anything about it. And it's just yeah. like, it's so interesting to me. I find it hilarious. Yeah, that's baseball. Like, one, if, if one team who's not that good beats you in one game out of the series, yeah. the whole fan base crumbles. Yeah. Crumbles. So that's that on both of our teams. A real quick recap on there. We did our all-time starting nine, guys. Uh, let us know what you think. Like, comment, subscribe. Love all that. We'll see you next week. Thank you so much. Thank you, Juan. Yes, sir. In trouble. It's going to be sacked. No, gets away. He runs. Gets away.